if you look up the uh, uh, literature on the origins of life, you will find many theories. But um, the subject remains uh, controversial. <clears throat> so our planet has existed for about 4.5 billion years. Life, uh, according to current scientific models, began uh, about uh, 3 billion years, 2.8 billion years ago with uh, genetic information on the rims of volcanoes in the form of microorganisms called chemolithoautotrophic hypothermophiles. Um, these are organisms that lived on the rims of volcanoes. There are many theories how the spark of life began, including um, the idea that the chemical primordial soup um, turned into genetic information as a result of lightning. <clears throat> All these explanations um, are, uh, of course, theoretical based on observations, but uh, still uh, they remain unproved theories. So here's an alternative that comes to us from Eastern wisdom traditions. The alternative is very simple. <clears throat> Life always existed. Just like um, we say, energy always exists. There's potential energy, there's actual energy. Actual energy is in the form of electromagnetic energy, strong and weak interactions, gravitational forces. But in the unified field theories, even though the equations have not been uh, uh, fully um, elucidated, it is thought, anyway, that all these energies uh, come from one source, one energy field, whatever we want to call it, the unified field, etc. Of course, gravity is still to be accommodated for um, with, uh, um, with the alignment with quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics electromagnetism, strong and weak interactions operate at the microscopic scale and gravity at the cosmic scale. We don't know how they fit together, but most people believe that ultimately there's only one force and that may be called the unified field. However, that unified field does not explain the origins of mind and life as we know it. So um, that is a fundamental problem. It's also the hard problem of consciousness. Here's the solution. Just as there's potential energy and actual energy, <clears throat> potential matter, which is wave function, Schrodinger's wave function, no matter. It is immaterial. It's a spread out wave of probabilities. Probabilities are not material, but then collapse of wave function becomes actual matter or what we call actual matter. Uh, matter being a human construct for modalities of uh, sensation, basically. Modalities of sensation are interpreted by humans as matter. So um, we don't have a theory for life. So just now, let's go with what the ancient wisdom tradition said, life always is. Life always is, and life is uh, always manifesting as the origin of species, right from bacteria to fungi, to plants, to uh, animals, to primates, to humans. And this transformation is a transformation actually of intelligence. Intelligence um, is what drives information. Information is a derivative of intelligence and information is embedded in energy and energy is a cosmic force and that information which is embedded in energy appears as biological phenomenon. So in reality, the origin of species is the transformation of energy, information, intelligence. And where does this all come from? Obviously, 
intelligence can only have one source, which is consciousness. So if we, if we do not accept matter as fundamental, and we should not because there's no such substance, matter is an experience of modalities of sensation, touch, sight, taste, smell, and um, sound, all combining to be experienced as different forms of matter, including inanimate matter, or what we call inanimate matter and animate matter, the biological organism. So here's a better way to understand the origin of life. Potential life exists at all times as pure consciousness. Pure consciousness uh, is a field of infinite possibilities, infinite creativity, um, infinite unpredictability, infinite correlation, and the source of attention and intention. This pure consciousness directs itself as intelligence and then information and then energy and finally matter. So um, this is the Vedic uh, concept, the most fundamental level of layer, Satchitananda. Truth, awareness, existence modifying itself into various modes of intelligence. In turn, modifying itself into mind, intellect, ego, feelings, thoughts, emotions, and uh, a limited biological identity. And finally, that projecting through sensory experience as the universe. So what is the origin of life? It always is. And what is the solution to the hard problem? Get rid of the superstition, useful superstition, but still a superstition of matter. Understand that the evolution of species is the evolution of consciousness in the form of intelligence, energy, information, and matter. If we accept this, then to some extent, um, we have a reasonably satisfiable model, human model, for the origin of life. Let me know if this is helpful or makes sense.